What's up YouTube, Kyron back up in here with another video and today we have a long awaited reboot of a video that I've been meaning to make. It's coming up on the two year anniversary of this video and this is the most popular video on my channel as of yet and that is my boots collection video where I showcase to you guys a few of my favorite affordable alternatives alongside some of my luxury variants of the boots that I have in my wardrobe. And since that video in two years, when I just watched it back, I've developed a whole lot. My, re my style has refined so much in two years and it's crazy to look back at that video and see the collection that I had at the time. And now looking at my boots collection is probably almost doubled in size, I wanna say, that being boots and derbies and non-sneakers. And it's just really cool to look back which ones have stayed, which ones have left, and what is the current rotation and what I really enjoy out of certain pieces of footwear and the knowledge that I care to showcase to you guys, the people that are trying to get into non-sneakers and trying to elevate their style. I know it sounds like maybe like, oh, like you're just capitalizing off an old video that did well. But what I wanted to do mainly with this video is share the knowledge that I've accumulated in the past two years, even though that video did so well, I feel like there's so much more information that I could shed to you guys and show to you guys now with the accumulation of boots that I have in this wardrobe. So now I'm gonna put it into different sections of boots. So there's gonna be like heeled boots, Western boots, combat boots of sorts slash like hiking just more functional footwear in, in the terms of boots and then also derby so that's going to be my couple of sections within those sections i'm going to show you guys if there are if there is an affordable alternative i will show it to you if not then i'll tell you about one uh, or how to like get one in a more reasonable manner yeah just show you guys that duality show you guys what is possible with this elevated piece of footwear so the best way that i like to start this video is how i did the last one show you guys the best entry piece of footwear. I'm gonna show you guys two of them. Uh, for those people that are just looking to get into the this style, I feel like this is the best piece to just like really jump in, get your toes wet and figure out if you even enjoy this silhouette or piece of fashion, or if it's just not meant for you at the time, or maybe you'll learn to grow it down the line. But this is my favorite. So this is the shoe that got me into boots. This is the 1490 Doc Martin. I do not wear these anymore, but when I did, holy, was this my favorite shoe. Shoe. I was like, wow, this is the world that I've been neglecting for so long. This is what boots feel like. Yeah, this is the one. So for all the people that are just so stuck on sh sneakers or trying to break out of that sneaker life, I feel like this is a great shoe for you. I think they retail at around like 200 bucks. So the border of entry is pretty reasonable and rightfully so. It's just like a very standard piece of footwear. You could level it up a bit more by getting the made in England iteration of this. But like I said, great place to start. I just blacked out the laces so that it looks a bit more high end and not too like screaming that it is Doc Martin. The only negatives I would say with this shoe is that the leather isn't the best. Um, it'll get you by, it'll get you through, but it isn't the best, best leather. But as a $200 range type of boot, it does the job. It's gonna last you so, so long. I know people from high school or even from like college that own this shoe or other variants of Doc Martens and they just, they're tanks. They like last so, so long. You can have a pair of these that last for like 10 plus years and they're gonna do the job, you know what I mean? So great boot if you're trying to get into it. And the reason why I showed this first is obviously because I feel like it's a great place to start. But in addition to that, I'm actually gonna be, uh, I'm actually gonna be auctioning these on my next Whatnot live stream, which is gonna be on August 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys know how these live shows go for me. I love the way that they turn out. I'm also going to be auctioning off a pair of Balenciaga denim for a dollar. I don't have them right here with me, but if you go and bookmark that show, you guys will get a sneak peek as to what those look like. But everything that I auction on that show starts at a dollar. So I really hope to see you guys there. It'd be a fantastic one. And it's my best way of giving back to you guys. So for a person that is a size 11 and they want to get their first chance to really try and see if they enjoy boots, they could probably get a really crazy steal on these and other items if they go check out that whatnot live show. So make sure to go check out the link in the description box below so that you could bookmark that live show and get busy, get some steals and deals for the end of the summer, transitioning into fall, winter, which is perfect time to wear some boots. So hope to see you guys there. We're gonna get into the rest of the footwear. Bars, damn. <laughs> 
All right, so getting into the rest of the footwear, since we just talked about Doc Martens, I guess we could get into like combat boots and other like affordable alternatives that I would see fit that would pivot away from Doc, Martin, Doc Martens. And then we'll just get into the rest of the combat boots that I have available here. So after Doc Martens, this is where I would kind of go when it comes to a f like the next step after that. These would probably be in like the 300 or so dollar range. And first up we have these by, I believe they're from Unknown Articles. I had this in the previous video, but they looked completely different because they had just a flat heeled sole. And I brought them to the shoemaker to add this beautiful Vibram or Vibram, whatever you want to call it, sole. So they're a lot more durable, a bit more aggressive and to my liking as of right now. So these are a really great staple in my wardrobe. I wish I gave them a bit more love personally, but the um, the long lacing system without the zipper kind of stops me from wearing them so, so often, but I really do enjoy these boots. Hence why I've kept them after so long. I just love the sleek po profile. It kind of reminds me of some of the old Saint Laurent boots back in the day. So really, really like this silhouette. And that's what this was inspired by. Some of the old Saint Laurent uh, stuff that Eddie Slama used to make. So yeah, great boot. I don't know what they price it at or if this company is still up and running, but if it is, then hopefully I could share in the links in the description box for you guys so you could check it out for yourself. After that, I would say another great alternative to, well, like spawning off of the denim, well, spawning off of the Doc Martens would be the Ori NYC combat boots. These are insane, especially for the price point. Like every time a person is trying to get into boots, this is probably the first one that I tell most people to look into just because, bruh, back zip, come on now. It's so easy to just slip on, slip off. Uh, they have this insole in them, if I could show that. So it makes it comfortable. So it's literally, it feels like a sneaker. So it's a very familiar for people that are going away from that sneaker life. So it just is a great transition for a lot of people that are just trying to get into it, you know? So that in addition to like just the lacing system kind of gives you that hike core mixed with what you would expect out of a boot and a slight low platform looks good with baggier pants. And they've just gotten better and better as the years have gone on. The smooth iteration of this boot is like definitely my favorite and I hope to get it one day. But shout out to Ray, he keeps on killing it. Look forward to some really great stuff coming from both of us in the near future. So keep on killing it, Ray. Did an amazing job. And another creator that makes good footwear is this pair of Somar boots. I believe these are called the Grunt boots, if I'm correct. And yeah, Somar also does an amazing job with this. Just love that very, very chunky sole. Looks great with wider pants. Has that toe cap right there. Super, super sick. The only thing with these is I wish they were a bit smaller. I went true to size and realistically, I could have went a size down with these. For the Ores, I went true to size. Perfect. Most of the other boots in this collection, I would recommend going at least half a size down, um, but they vary, vary depending on the boot. So whenever it comes up, hopefully I'll remember to detail the sizing that I went for, but across the board, I'm typically US 10 and a half to 11, more typically 10 and a half. I mean, more typically 11, but yeah, I went true to size as a 44 with these and they're just a bit too big, unfortunately, but great boot nonetheless. Owen really killed it with these, super, super sick. And they, they flew, they literally flew flu and the price point for this and Ray's boots are just phenomenal. I, I would say for bang for your buck, these past three shoes that I just showed you would probably be the best offerings. But yeah, that's what I would say. Also in terms of bang for your buck, I got a really crazy steal with these. Obviously they look beat to hell now because I just wear them so much, but in the winter, these are my go-tos. With baggier pants and everything, obviously it looks a little crazy because of the Chelsea shaft, but I love these. These are the Tractor Bozo boots by Rick Owens. A great pair of shoes. I got them for a steal as well because just got a little discount on them. And also there was like crazy price like adjustment on them as well. So I got them for like something close to like 500 bucks or something like that, which is insane. Um, so it just made it super, super reasonable for me to pull, pull the trigger on these where they're, I think the retail's like 1400, something like that. So yeah, great pair of shoes, love them oh so dearly. So when it comes to designer footwear, I would say you're able to get them for a really great price if you're able to network and find people that work in these luxury retail stores. Um, obviously don't just connect with them to get their discount, but through being in the industry and stuff like that, you end up meeting some people that overlap in your field and you're able to like just kind of like ex exchange benefits with one another, see what you could provide and hopefully they could like bless your way as well. If not, then a great way to get discounted designers either on any of these secondhand platforms like a whatnot, like a Grail, like a Depop, eBay, Etsy, like all these places you could find really, really good discounted designers. So 
definitely just hunt around and you could find some seals and deals of your own. I got these in a size 43 and a half. So I half size down on this and they fit perfectly. So definitely recommend that for the Rick boots. And a more recent acquisition would be these, a more recent acquisition would be these Balenciaga bulldozer boots. This is probably the most recent boot that I got. Um, something that I never thought would be in my style range, but it kind of just suits the like darker aesthetic that I kind of gravitate towards here and there uh, within my closet. Obviously like half of my wardrobe is kind of that vibe right now. So it does really suit it, but yeah really really like this also you guys know i'm a sucker for any long boot that has this easy to access zipper on the side just because it makes my life uh, a dream come true so i really recommend that to anyone if you end up having boots you'll understand my struggle with like just putting them on and off is a pain if you want something that's just easy to just zip on zip off you're going to like a person's house or you're, you're like going to a party you're going to a dinner or whatever and you're like rushing out you want something like this not something you have to lace up lace down all that so great pair of boots cannot complain with these definitely a higher price point and more in the luxury side of things but if you're interested in something a bit more flashy or flexy or whatever this is probably for you so great option if you're more, more on the other side which is nothing wrong with that you could you get sick boots on either side i just showed you amazing affordable op options and then some luxury options so now we're going to switch up the style we'll probably get into derbies almost forgot these were a pair of boots like one of my first boots that i was kind of geeked to get i bought them full price but a friend of mine found a better price online for them uh, for me which is these 1017 alix 9sm hiking boots these was like these were the boots that matthew williams was making after he was making the boots with ROA uh, so this is like their own silhouette with a leaks great great boot in general the only thing is that to make it a bit more functional I definitely would have chose something besides this patent leather but the like the soles itself are just super rigid obviously I've they've seen better days like I've worn them through like the mud the rain like everything like this is literally a hiking shoe for me when there's like something that's a bit more resilient I'm trying to do but still make it a bit techy or hikey or whatever I probably go for this boot right here so really a great pair of shoes that i bought and i recommend if you guys want an alternative to this i would recommend any of the roa boots they make fantastic footwear if not roa then uh, the banner boots are also a great option for you i'll leave both options for that in the description box below in case you're interested i can't believe i forgot to talk about these but i'm just going to insert this clip because i already filmed the whole damn video but it's these balenciaga strike boots i don't know if i showed them in the video but i'm just showing them now in case i didn't because I'm packing up all the boots into their boxes for this video and I realized, hey, that box seems a bit heavier than I remember and it makes sense that I kept it in the damn box without even remembering. But yeah, this is the Balenciaga Strike boot. One of my favorite boots, definitely probably the most worn boot in my current rotation. As of now, that's why I forgot to show it in this list just because it's like such a mainstay in my everyday wear that's like normally at the front of my, um, just like my shoe rack and it's just always there. So I always forget to include it in recap videos like this, but the Balenciaga strike boot super great mainstay boot i would definitely recommend it to a lot of people i personally sized down once or to actually twice with these i think i went for a nine when normally you could go for a well, i'm normally a size 11 so take that with a grain of salt i'm normally like yeah a 44 i went for a 42 so yeah with balenciaga i tend to size down two times except for the bulldozer boots which i went true to size rule of thumb but yes, definitely recommend these. Super resistant, go with a whole bunch of outfits, have a good amount of chunk to them. So they look great with wide pants. So highly recommend, check them out. Okay, now we're gonna get into some derbies. This is definitely a, a sector of non-sneaker footwear that people really enjoy. It's either like derbies or loafers. Personally, I don't own any loafers at the moment just because I've realized that loafers are hard to fit perfectly with the way my foot is. They either just slip off way too easily or they're way too tiny. So I haven't found my perfect loafer as of yet, but derbies, I definitely have a couple of models that I would love to show to you guys and just let you guys know what the world of derbies is looking like for me. So, so as of right now, my two favorite affordable options for derbies are definitely the Ore NYC ones you guys see there's a little pattern going on with these but rightfully so it's just the price point you can't beat it the quality you can't beat it everything is just a one steak sauce with the Ore nyc derbies and the boots um but yeah when you're looking for affordable high quality non-sneaker attire i would just recommend the Ore's. honestly personally i'm a very big 
advocate for them. And it just makes sense because it just makes sense, you know? <laughs> but yeah, it just, it just makes sense. Personally, I think you're not gonna really find too many other boots of this quality in this price point because the next step after this would be designer, which is like in the thousand dollar range. I believe this is around 300 to 400. And below this would be like made in England, Doc Martens or Doc Martens in general, which is like the $200 range. So this is a great in between sweet spot that I would recommend and rightfully so. So yeah, the ORA derbies in black, but I also have them in another color, which you'll see right now. The next joints I got are these. These are limited to 100 pairs, which is the bought derbies by ORA NYC. Beautiful green patent leather or oiled leather, whatever you want to call it right here. They're just super, super clean, have a really nice sheen to them. Um, they just look really luxe. Love the way that these look. Good little vibram or vibram sole on the bottom right there. Boom. But yeah, clean pair of derbies. This is nice if you're trying to just get a little styly with it. Something to break up the all black boots or shoes that you may have because clearly I've shown you a lot of black boots, but it just makes sense to get uh, a black pair of boots because I find it's the most wearable option. And even though they're different silhouettes, it's just a safer bet to have a black iteration because it'll go with more of your outfits rather than being stuck with like a red or a white or a blue pair of boots it's just harder to style and just gives you more grace styling a colored pair of boots but when it came to the derbies I, I mean ray offered me this colorway too and it's rare you know like i'm not gonna knock that down man come on these are beautiful green is a lot more wearable than the other colors i said just now too like white red or or blue so yeah green is within like the earthy tones and more of the colors that i have on this side of my wardrobe so i could pair a lot more with this on this side that makes sense. So it's manageable. The Ore bought boots. Check them out. Next up, this is probably my most worn pair of derbies. And that's because they just, they're just the ones, bro. Like, I love these. These are a great pair of derbies, but they are on the pricier side. So I do understand if they're just not fathomable for a lot of people. And this is the uh, Surge, Sergeant, Surgeon or Sergeant Derbies by Balenciaga. Just those huge bulky pair of derbies they're built like tanks they're just massive kind of give you like clown shoe vibes but they're really really cool i just love the profile that they give when you have some really baggy pants they give you a, a healthy amount of height as well um but yeah they're just made super super sick i'm really grateful obviously i'm just gonna be transparent with you guys i got these gifted to me i did not pay the full price for these nor did i pay for the um for the bulldozer boots the bulldozer boots i would go true to size by the way the ore derbies true to size as well the I would go down two sizes actually I think I got these in a 42 and I'm normally a 44 just for reference so if that makes sense to you guys duly noted <laughs> but yeah uh, hopefully I caught up on all the ones that I just showed to you guys Alix went true to size as well so yeah it really changes by the shoe every shoe is made entirely different depending on the last and the leather and the composition of the shoe like there's a lot of variables that go into sizing a shoe and also the way your foot is there's just a lot that goes into that but i'm gonna try and remember to keep on telling you guys what is best for me with the boots so that you guys could keep it in mind if you're shopping for that specific boot let's get into the rest we're gonna go for heeled boots now all right so for my heeled designer boots it's only right that we start off with the one that started it all this was a gift from my mother this is like the only thing that was uh gifted to me by like a family member or like parents or something like that everything else has been purchased by myself or gifts for from brand partnerships that i've done which is basically work for me really grateful for my mom this was a birthday present so huge out that. shout out to mom dukes always looking out for the boy i think this was like 2017 is when i got these so this was me elevating going crazy you know what i mean this in the climate of what shoes were going on like what shoes was popping at the time was like the wyatt's so wyatt's was like killing the game and then when these came out by Balenci everyone was like oh I don't know about square toe like it wasn't it wasn't sexy to have a square toe you know what I mean so me I just seen the climb and I was like listen I really like Demna's style direction I feel like that suits me a bit more than Eddie Slamon because personally Eddie Slamon was like always super skinny and like that's just not my build personally that's not what could rock with me but Demna's silhouettes was I could get jiggy with that you know it's, it's similar to my sil silhouettes so this was like when I was finding my love for for Balenciaga. So like when I found these boots and I was looking for something for my birthday, this was an amazing acquisition. Like I love these. I still love these to this day. And it's a great like memory for me, just like a really, really great gift. And 
a memory of me like making my own decisions in fashion and not letting like the client of uh, climate of fashion sway my decision making and really just trusting my own uh, style and like knowing what my personal style is, what portions would match well with what I like out of certain brands and silhouettes, et cetera. So this was a great boot, love this so much. And I could easily wear this in some of the outfits that I've been wearing more recently. I could adapt it. It's not an everywhere, everyday wear, of course, but it is a beautiful one nonetheless. So these are the Balenciaga Harness boots, I believe around 2017, like I said before, they got resold and all that. Great life left in them. And this just shows you that if you put a little bit of money towards something, it will last you very long. Got these in 2017, we're in 2023 now, they're still going crazy. So goes to show you, let's keep going. Okay, now these, these are not for everybody, okay? This is like, you know that um, Dante's Gates of Hell or whatever the hell, that, this is at the bottom. This is tabby boots, not for everybody. I know I might get flame for these, it's whatever, it's okay. But what I do know, when you are getting deeper into fashion, you gotta, you gotta go with the tabbies, my boy. Sometimes you step out in these, people just know. People just, they're like, okay, that's him, that's him. He know he knows fashion. You can't, you can't not, not know a little bit of something if you got these, you know? And if you're getting these without having that little extra something of knowledge, it's kind of quiet for you but for the most part most people that i know that have a little tabby boot in their collection they definitely have some type of some time some type of relevancy within the fashion space for sure or they just like they just know what they're talking about you know so i feel like this is a trophy for most a lot of people that appreciate margella and what he's done this is like historical of course and by no means is it uh an appealing truth to the general public but in the space of fashion this is a trophy definitely and i and i love the way that these are represented in the space of fashion and how they're just like held to such a high regard every time i wear this with like baggy pants and like something that's a bit more dressy like a little button up shirt nice trouser a little tank top of sorts it's just beautiful man this is a great like a little wine drinking boot if you're trying to go, go nice with that. So here you go. Really great boot, Margiela Tabbies. I got these on sale at Essence for like, I wanna say like 600 bucks, something like that. These is, this is also another like $1,400 shoe. So if you wait and you find the steals, you could definitely get the steals. So there you have it. Next up, we have two grails for a lot of people. This is the PL2s and this is the 788Zs, I believe. Both of these are fantastic boots. Obviously, I got one in like a lighter gray, one's more in a dark black. I wish this was all black personally. I might dye them. I'm not too sure yet, but yeah. The special difference between the PL2s is the PL2s has the front zip, whereas the 788Zs have the back zip. Um, but yeah, great boots once again. I'm gonna talk about my privilege. I was I was lucky enough not to have to pay for both of these shoes. If I did have to pay for these, they would be extremely expensive and I acknowledge that and I understand that. So if you guys are in the market for them, try and play it smart, go on a place like a grail of sorts and you could probably get them discounted if they were used because brand new, they're gonna cost you a pretty penny. But what I will say is if you do get them brand new, you're gonna break them in all on your own and they're just gonna feel amazing. That's exactly what I did. So if you're in that kind of space and you don't mind shelling out a bit more of the money, you could get them on a place like a Farfetch or like a Essence or anything like that. Great boot nonetheless. Like I said, both of them were gifted, really phenomenal boots. But at the end of the day, Guidi makes some of the best boots in the game. Really expensive, like I said before, but you get what you're paying for. There's great quality leather in these boots and they're just gonna last a very, very long time. If you take these to any type of shoemaker, they're gonna tell you like oh, wow these are made like insanely you know like and the shoemakers that i go to they have like 15 20 25 years of experience and they see this boot to this day and they're like amazed they're always like blown away because they're like wow there's a lot of boots are not made with this type of intent or integrity you know what i mean so incredible boots they're they they make sense when it comes to the price point when you break it down but yeah it really is up to you and what your own financial situation is or what you're trying to value in terms of the shoes that are in your wardrobe or in your style range you know so here you go guidis great boots all right so we're gonna end off the video with a, some of my western style footwear a lot of the western footwear goes very well with this side of my wardrobe which is more of like the earth tones uh vintage uh things of that nature okay you know like that this is what matches some of that so that's why there's there's not too much of it but it pairs so well with these 
clothes. And then also I use a few of the other footwear uh, pieces that I just showed, like the Gweedies and other things like that, because it kind of overlaps really, really well. Putting like high and low, that's something that I like to do with my own personal style. Put some vintage items with the Gweedies and like mix and match that up, because it just looks, uh, it looks really, really nice to me. So I'm just gonna show you guys some of my favorite pieces of Western footwear, show you some cheaper options, and then also a bit more of an expensive option so that you guys can see that range. So here we go. Starting off with the cowboy boots. I showed you guys this in the last video as well. This is a great, great option. One of my favorite boots in my wardrobe just because I love the silhouette. The pointed toe is just very, very, very appealing and aesthetically on point. This with some baggy trousers, like you can completely puddle over all of the boot and just having that point just is very, very, it's just, it just works. It really works very well. And I suggest a lot of people to try it out. Or even if you want to get a bit more experimental, do the cowboy boots with the shorts. I've seen people do that and it comes out very nice as well. The only problem with these is that they are definitely a bit too small for me, um, but I make them work and hopefully down the line, I'll be able to find a pair of cowboy boots that just fit me perfectly. Um, I don't, I am I think I'm at the point where I maybe I would sell these and then get a pair that's a bit more expensive, but fit me exactly the way that they intend because there's certain days where I wear these halfway through the day. I'm just like, why did I do that? Like there's no amount of for the fashion that it makes sense for me to suffer in these boots, you know, but they are extremely, extremely nice for like shoots or like certain type of styling opportunities, whatever. They're great. So hopefully eventually I'll be able to replace these with the ones that fit me perfectly. But nonetheless, cowboy boots, you could find variants of these on places like Etsy, eBay, Depop. You could definitely find a bunch or locally to you, maybe any thrift store or vintage store. If you're in Montreal, Palmo Goods has a bunch of them as well. So there you go cowboy boots. Next up, this is another popular boot as of recent. This is like an engineer style boot. Also got really popular this year, which is like 2023. People wearing these with shorts, very like Pinterest-esque outfits. Uh, I got these sent to me by, hold on, gotta get the right name. I got these sent to me by Batero, which is a nice leather goods footwear manufacturer. Uh, they're all, it's all made in Italy and it's all with this vegetable leather. Like it's all like undyed and like unaltered. So you kind of like make your own patina onto it. Although I just, I really did do a little too much on them maybe. So maybe I will be dyeing these or like, uh, doing something to them. Maybe making them like a more of like a brown, similar to the cowboy boot that I just showed you because I feel like that doesn't look as, as nice anymore, but we'll have to see. Maybe I just keep on beating them up and had my own patina as the years go on and on but yeah great pair of boots i wish they were a bit taller on the shaft so i could try a bit more styling with boots and stuff uh, with uh, shorts and stuff but maybe i'll get creative and try it nonetheless because i haven't done that yet this summer and we have one more month left so i might as well get cracking on that so here we go engineer boots check them out definitely a few on like places like etsy or ebay like i said before or depop great boots Guidis, by the way, I went true to size. If I didn't mention that from before, Batero boots, true to size as well. Cowboy boots, they're killing me. I don't know what size they are because all the cowboy boots are vintage. Most of them that you find, so like they're not even properly sized. So I recommend you trying them on in person if possible. But yeah, it's difficult. The last boot is a cult classic, of course, and this is the pair of Wyatts, SLP Wyatts. Uh, the reason why I got these was also through was also through some work that I did. So technically, I got these through um, some through a paid partnership that I did. So technically, I got these through some work I did on Instagram. So I was lucky enough to get these through that opportunity. There was not much like money out of pocket for them, but even at the price that. I know I could, I, I, that I know you could get them at with some of the sales that I've seen on Wyatt's. It's very reasonable based on like what I've seen back in the day. Uh, I remember the retail on these was like 1500 and I've seen them go on sale upwards to, well, down to like 500 bucks. So they are quote unquote attainable if you really do want them. And if you could justify that cost per wear, that is such a, like a valuable idea or strategy to base your clothes, clothing purchases on. If you're going to wear it X amount of times versus the amount that you put towards it and you divide it up, you can kind of validate some of the purchases that you make that way. So this is the Saint Laurent Wyatt in like the brown chestnut colorway. Really nice. This is also good for, like I said, some of like the flared pants, Western outfits, vintage outfits that I have. Great boot.
And that is my full boots collection video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was such a fun time to film, but I am pooped and I hope you guys enjoyed that long video. It was kind of a great like just blanket video to like let you guys see all of the boots that I've accumulated since that video two years ago that did so well. And I hope you guys enjoy it in present day, see where my style has gravitated towards and hopefully some of these tricks and tips could help you guys in the future if you're looking to develop your own style and get into non-sneaker attire because I feel like it's all I've been wearing as of recently. I barely wear any sneakers unless I'm going out to do groceries or do something very light. Most of the time I'm going out in boots or slides if it's the summertime, you know what I mean? So that's the two. And sneakers is kind of like becoming not a thing of the past, but once you get older, you start to like really realize that it's not everything. Boots becomes kind of that replacement of that. So, or non-sneakers. So I hope you guys appreciated this video. Let me know if there's any questions you guys have whatsoever regarding like sizing, places to buy your own non-sneakers, any type of tips, tricks, questions that I can answer, please let me know in the comments below. I love to help you guys out where I can in this community that we have here on YouTube. And I'm just grateful. Once again, thank you guys all for everything. Once again, make sure to go follow me on my Instagram, G-O-T-S-W-E-I-G-E. -E. It was where you could keep up to date with me more frequently. I post Fitbix this and that, so that's what you can check out on there. Follow the bar on TikTok as well, S W E I G E. And that's about it, man. I'm gonna see you guys on the next one. Peace.